Hi everybody, welcome to the Vectis YouTube channel. I'm Joanne MacDonald and I'm here with Vectis's TV and film expert, Nick Dykes. Um, what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at some of the pieces in the TV and film sale, including Star Wars, on Thursday the 23rd of September 2021. So we've just selected a, a few of the tasty items that we're going to get Nick to talk about in a moment and then we'll look at um, more of the lots in a, a little while. So the first one we've got here, Nick, um, which is lot number 4193, Lando Calrissian. Yep. Tell me about this. This one is um, PBP Foreign Empire Strikes Back card. So when you say PBB, is that P, is that the P manufacturer? PBP. Yeah, that's the that's, that's the manufacturer. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the um, European subsidiaries from right. Palantir. Um, so they produce them under like a license. Yeah, they yeah. produce them under license. Yeah, um, but as you can see, the logo is different to a normal ESB logo. Obviously written in foreign writing. Yeah, no. Um, very rare, very hard to find. They didn't do a lot of these. Um, the back's also very different. How many is on the back of those? We always describe Star Wars card figures as the number of backs and people can tell yeah. the age and things like that. So that would be a... It's a 45 back. 45 back. Uh, yeah, um, very hard And this to is free? One, one figure free or something? Didn't have to... Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the equivalent of the, um, the Merle Wiss thing that we did over here. So they would save tokens or something would they and then get yeah, yeah but obviously yeah, they mail away for us you're not going to do we're <laughs> not going to do that with this have to buy these or well they could do but i don't think they'd get very <laughs> very very costly yeah. about the condition of this one then yeah it's in it's in nice it's in nice condition it has been torn at the top and it's been touched up with ink right which you which can affect the value greatly but because these are so rare really people sort of tell what they can get yeah okay and what's the estimate on that one? The estimate on this one is one to two thousand. Right. Okay. Um, should do that one, imagine. The next one we've got here is a Harbert, so that presumably that's another. It's another foreign. Yeah, another foreign uh, variant. D three B O as opposed to. You tell me. <laughs> well, to the untrained eye, that looks exactly like C three P O. Well, it is C three P O, but why they called it? D with the three B or I have no idea. So re really, it is it is C three PO. It's just that their edition, that's what they call it, rather than calling it C three PO. Yeah, there are there are strange foreign translations. Yeah. Um, I think. So you, you think just letters and numbers would be the same, so it would be universal, but that's quite strange. Yeah, very. I think R two D two. I think they did it with R two D two as well. I think it's like I P three two or something like <laughs> that. But you know. So again, what back? I said 12 back, Star Wars 12 back. Um, this is Italian. Um, what age would that be? 77, 78. Yeah. So Early yeah, first one. wave, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that look, looks, again, looks in really good condition. It? Yeah, it is, it's very nice. Uh, there's a little bit of a crack in the bubble and a little crack in the stem. But um, yeah, it's still in really, really good nick. What's the estimate then on that one? That's three to five hundred. And that's lot number. What lot number is that? One? Three to five hundred. Lot four one eight zero. So we've got two foreign editions. There's another foreign edition here, which is um, a really unusual one. Toll toys. Yeah, that's Australian. Right. Okay. Yeah, Australian. Again, licensed by. Yeah, but, but, well, I would have thought. Yes. Yeah. Bit, yeah, they come from Kenner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, 12 back again, early issue, Princess Leia, popular character. Uh, this one's estimated at six to eight hundred, but I would imagine, I think it's probably going to do a lot better than that. So is this the, this the one to watch to see right now? Yeah, I would, yeah, I would think so. There, there's, a, there's a couple of figures in the in the sale that are, it's very difficult to put a value on. And is it because Princess, like you said, Princess Leia is popular, it's like um, Boba Fett is popular and his price seems to always go up quite high, is it? Or is it because of the rarity? Well, I think it's a bit combination of both. I think more of the rarity than anything else. Right. Um, I mean, you would think that the 
you know, the Australian market was probably quite big, but they didn't really produce a lot of nice. figures. So, um, you know, it's they, they are. Very, you don't very see many. Toys no, you don't. You don't. You don't see many tall toys, low grade toys at all. Um, I mean, I think if I if I'm correct, they only actually did them for Star Wars, right? And then basically scrapped that yeah. idea, and it was the stuff they were shipping out was Kenner stuff. Right. So. Well, I, I don't. I can't remember whether they, whether they lost the license or or how it came about, but I think it's only a shot the, and yeah, the around. The tall toys logo. It's got a little bit of wear though, hasn't it? Is that why the? Oh yeah, I mean it's, it's, it's got, got a bit of a yeah. crease in the card, but still fully factory sealed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a bit of edge wear, a bit of rare around the punch hole, but. But still, that's one. Very to watch. very rare. Then we've got this one here. This is. Um, what you would call graded, if you just explain a little bit what we mean by graded for the uninitiated. Yeah, sure. Um, basically, there's, um, there's three sort of recognised action figure grading companies um, AFA, um, CAS, they're both American based, and then there's UKG, which is based in UK, mm -hmm. which uh, most European people use obviously for yeah. obvious reasons basically all it is is you send your item to the graders they appraise it authenticate it give it a grade score on based based on condition and then seal it in a case and is it um a universal grade score Do different graders use different scoring schemes there isn't a universal right Okay, grading so scheme. You would have to look up that one for that grade. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, to be fair, all all three of them are, are pretty similar. Pretty similar yeah. when it comes to grading. I mean, there's always anomalies, uh, but generally, they're, they're, they're very very similar. If you were to, if this is a 85 grade item, I would imagine that if you sent it to any of the three, it would yeah. it would get. So the when same you say it's an 85 grade item, is it graded? From naught to hundred, or how is yeah, it? What's it's, the scheme? Yeah, it's it's graded. Well, if it's graded not to hundred, but um, I think the lowest graded item I've ever seen is thirty. Right. Uh, but then I think some did run over that. Bus. <laughs> um, and obviously, very very rarely do you ever see anything with a score of a hundred because. Right. No matter and how good it is, you can find a fault. There is a sticker somewhere on that, doesn't? Isn't there that tells you the grading? Yeah, yeah. There's a the sticker at the bottom of the case. So that tells you who's graded it and how much yeah. graded it. I mean, people may not realise Vectis do have their own grading system. So all our toys are graded from we do it who are fair, good, excellent, and then we do near mint and mint, and sometimes yeah. they do poor plus or the other next bit excellent plus if it's just a little bit I mean we very rarely describe something as mint because it, like you said before it would have to be absolutely factory fresh to be mint wouldn't it and if we say it is um, excellent it will be really good but excellent does mean it might have minor wear yeah. if it's something like good it means that it has some wear and in these cases it might have a bit of a tiny bit of crease about a tiny bit of bumps and although we try our best to, to mention a lot of the faults if it's something that's poor you can't ever put all the faults in the text can you oh no no the, yeah definitely but a poor rating does mean that it does have possibly items missing guns missing yeah. it was a star wars figure it's it's maybe torn ripped creased so we do have our own grading system and if we say it's excellent plus it will be excellent plus um but on the but, on the back of that the photographs the photographs yeah, are yeah. very good. Or we can always add extra photographs if anybody wants any more. Always contact us and we'll give you the back shots. Or if it's something like this, you want a close up of the bubble, um, anything like that, we'll always give you extra ones. And they don't just do this for Star Wars figures, though, do they? Oh, no, no. It's um, basically any, any toy. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's also companies that grade comics, they grade trading cards, yeah. etc. Um, I mean, I've seen strawberry shortcake. In oh, yeah. Grade, yeah, yeah grade I mean, strawberry shortcake. If, and My Little Ponies, you know, yeah, you yeah, My oh, Little yeah, Pony graders. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, they pretty much grade any yeah. time, so, um, that's what they are toy grade. And I suppose, does it protect them then, as well, the future? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the thing is, is, when you've had it graded, it, um, I mean, it, it authenticates the item, um, and the item's sealed, so that you know that the item that's been graded is the item yeah. in the case. Um, yeah, of course it offers protection, because it's, it's sealed in that case. Yeah. Um, 
and the the plastic that they use is um, UV um, resistant. Also, oh, it's not going to yeah. Uh, yeah. Get damaged by sun or heat or anything. Well, like that. it'll offer a certain amount yeah. of protection. It's I mean, we normally percent. anything that's of a certain value like these, we normally put these in protection, don't we, or where we can to make sure that it's not going to get rattled about. Oh yeah, like yeah. That. I mean, so, yeah, but they always go into uh, And all of when they're packing them, they're really careful how they pack them with the bubbles. I know that you taught them how to put the foam round it to make sure that nothing comes out and bubbles don't yeah. come loose. So because it's an in-house shipping service. They are very careful with these, and, and these do provide some bit of protection. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's obviously that's paid for. So how much would it be to upgrade something like that? Is it um, is it cheap or is it expensive? Or I suppose it it's it's well as it is, I suppose it depends what you deem to be expensive. I think obviously it depends I the the, sh the shipping costs to take into yeah. consideration, etc. But the actual grading itself. On a carded figure, I think it's about thirty pounds plus VAT, oh, so okay. it's not. Yeah, it's right. not a ridiculous amount. And that's there. including the ceiling in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. including okay. the case yeah. and the the, the grading right. itself. It's not as expensive as I thought. I was thinking it was going to be a lot more than that, but I suppose you would have to have a decent item to be graded. Well, yes, well, yes and no. I mean, it, you might do it with an item that's may not particularly score highly but could be very rare right so you might feel you know you might think well yes. it's you know it's going to preserve it better mm. um but gra grading is pr probably a little bit controversial but grading does tend to add a monetary value yeah and it, it also would be okay if they were all universal I well yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it, it's it, always it, down to human well it's human judgment human, human judgment and that's yeah and that's yeah. sometimes where it but may But our grading system at this, we all use the same one, don't we? In oh, yes, that's perfect, of course. Yeah. <laughs> totally infallible. <laughs> no, but I would use, yeah. try and use, if you say something is poo and I say something poo, I know that if you've said it's poo, it means that it's got tears, it's got rips and it's got things missing. And I understand what poo is within our context of Vectis. Yeah. It's just... We always say to everybody else to kind of read the grading with along with all of these toys, don't we? Oh yeah, and, yeah. and obviously have a look at the pictures because all grading, even the grading of the graders, is totally subjective. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, human yeah, judgment. Yeah, yeah. So my my excellent might be slightly different to yeah. somebody else's. And a photograph, our photograph, you can zoom right in, like you said, the real really good. So the Star Wars collection we've been talking today with Nick about is going to be for sale on Thursday, the twenty third of September at Vectis Auctions. The catalogue is actually now live on the Vectis website. If you visit www.vectis.co.uk you will be able to view all of the lots um, including the rest of the sale which is there is other carded figures as well as Star Wars such as Ghostbusters, Masters of the Universe, lots of other toy and film related items as well. Um, if you want additional information on any of these items or you would like a global shipping quote to anywhere in the world, uh, just contact us on admin at vectis.co.uk with the lot number that you require additional information or images for, or the lot number again for where you would want a postal quote to. All of our shipping is in-house. We have a professional shipping team who are expert in what they do. Um, so pop along and have a look. What we'll do now is we'll just take you through some of the other items, scan through them quite quickly so you can get an idea of the scale of the sale which will be on on the 23rd. Thank you for watching.